You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer live questions asked by people who listen to the podcast. So they called in, ask us fitness questions, and we assess them and answer them live on air. So you get to listen to that. But before we do, we actually do an intro portion in the episode where we talk about current events, we bring up scientific studies, we have fun conversation, and we mention our sponsors. Today's intro portion was 45 minutes long. In that intro portion, we start out by talking about Justin's six-pack goals. Ooh. He's trying to get a sexy midsection. Watch out, everybody. Could he get more attractive? We'll see what happens. Uh, then Impossible. We talk, then we talk about the talk with our kids. Uh, my daughter's in fifth grade. Justin's son is about the same age, and we're having the talk with them now, yep. so they get to learn about sex and all that the stuff. birds and the bees. Then uh, Adam talked about his son showing his basketball skills warmed his heart. It warmed his heart. But number one moment in his child's life so far. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about uh, drinking in Tahoe. Uh, Justin had a hangover because he forgot to use one of our sponsors. Shame. Z-Biotics. Now, Z-Biotics is a genetically modified probiotic you take before you drink alcohol. Now, what these special bacteria do is they actually break down some of the negative compounds that are produced by drinking alcohol. It's a patented product, and it's crazy effective you take it before you drink. The next day, you feel way better. This stuff is phenomenal. Try it out. Just try it out. You'll be sold. Um, and of course, if you use the Mind Pump discount, you get a huge uh, Mind Pump code. Excuse me, you get a huge discount. Just go to zbiotics.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump for the ten percent off discount. Then I talk about an article by Fast Company talking about the future of gyms and fitness. Very interesting statistics in there. So we have some good conversation there. Adam talks about his massive TV that's way cl too close to his face in his house. And it gives him headaches when he forgets to wear blue light blocking glasses. Now our favorite company of blue light blocking glasses is Felix Grey. We like them because they're not orange or red. So they don't change the color of everything. You can still be cool. They're very effective um, and they're stylish. Um, and of course, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. You actually get 5% off with the Mind Pump code. Go check them out. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for 5% off. By the way, there's free returns and exchanges, so you can try them out and see how you feel about them. After that, we got into the live portion. We answered questions from four people. We talked to Amber from California, Andrew from New York, Will from Texas, and Steven from Montana, Great Missouri. Missouri. Thank you, Doug, for that. I don't know my my uh, <laughs> my abbreviations there. Uh, great, great time answering those live questions, and we'll be doing these episodes once a week. Look, uh, one more thing I want to mention. We have extended our uh, December bundle promotion throughout this month up until the 10th. Okay, so here's what we did. We took multiple workout programs and combined them for different types of people. They're called bundles. Each one of these bundles is nine plus months of workouts planned out for you. So for over nine months, everything's set up for you. Your exercises, your sets, your reps, what body parts you're working every day. Uh, there's video demos in each of the programs. So if you want to look up an exercise, you can learn how to do it properly. Everything's spelled out for you. Here's the three bundles. The first one is for beginners. It's called the new to weightlifting bundle. So if you're just getting started or you haven't worked out for a few months or six months, start there. The next one is for intermediate lifters. It's called the Body Transformation Bundle. So if you've been working out for six months consistently, a year consistently, that's a good one for you. Now, if you've been working out more than a year consistently and you're advanced, try the New Year Extreme Intensity Bundle. That's a great one to take it to the next level. Um, by the way, all of them include one year of free access to our private forum, so you can ask people questions about your workouts. You can post videos of your exercises and get critique on your form. You can have fun sharing funny memes. Uh, and Adam, Justin, and myself periodically appear on there as well, answering questions. So it's a great place to be. It's normally $99. It's free for the first year if you sign up for any of those bundles. Now, to learn more or to just sign up, all you have to do is go to mapsdecember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, December.com. <laughs> why, why are you called Doug a snack? He's a snack, man. He's not a full meal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, not quite. Just a snack. And so what's Justin then? Oh, yeah. Justin's a, Justin's a super-sized dinner. 
<laughs> what are you, bro? You're uh, the heaviest one. I know. I, you know, it's a buffet. I'm totally. It's a buffet. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, Doug. Feeds the family of four. <laughs> I've been totally stacking plates. I've been totally projecting my own insecurities on Justin all the last year. <laughs> I know. I've dude. been calling him fat, but in That's reality, all right. I I'm knew in, it. I'm in the worst shape yeah. for sure. Just, I like how Justin just gives you space. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just lets you. Like, yeah. yeah. He's like, he knows. That's why. Yeah. yeah I, know. Like, I know what you're doing. Yeah. He I knows, feel bad. He knows he can make me cry. Ah, we're <laughs> <laughs> at any moment. Yeah. We're gonna hold back. <laughs> that could hurt his feelings. <laughs> I'm gonna let him keep calling me fat. That's uh, okay. <laughs> we all tipped the scales a little bit, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh. yeah, you're pushing weight too, right? So yeah. now, okay, um, comparing yourself uh, to you know, other versions of yourself, where where would you say you are currently right now? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's but, a good question. I think <laughs> I think I'm I'm on the way back to almost feeling like I'm somewhat normal. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like yeah. I feel like it's I feel like I have abilities again, my strengths coming back, but uh, it's been a while. It, it actually being less consistent and then going back into consistency was like a shell shock for me. I'm like, wow, I was really like not in, you know, uh, condition like I used to be. Yeah, your body changed fast. It's stupid. It's just like, just, oh, let's just put attention here. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. See what happens. No, for me, the, the heaviest I ever, ever got was I think 235 in the, so 230, 235. So two twenty for me is getting it's getting up there, dude. Yeah, I haven't been two twenty in. Yeah, but you know that years. weight is you know weight doesn't matter. I've been two twenty and been in amazing shape, and I've been two twenty in some of my worst shape. Right. So like when I did that, when I did the transformation, I was two twelve and twenty percent body. So that was the worst shape I'd ever been in. Right. Two twelve. 20% body fat. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I have a total different body composition right now. So mm-hmm. I definitely I'm heavier, right? I was 230. Something. Are we going to do the body fat test? We should. Are we? Yeah. yeah I mean, the, what's the point? <laughs> yes, what's the point? You know what I mean? The, the I highest mean, score is not the winner. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it, I, it I, like it, I like it still for tightening things up, right? Because, you know, as I start to, and I'm not there yet, right? When I start tracking and really getting yeah. diligent with the nutrition, um, I like to have a, a body fat percentage. It doesn't matter to me either. I'll, I don't, you know, everybody argues over like what's more accurate. All, all I, it's just like the step counter bullshit and all the Fitbit mm-hmm, stuff. Like yeah. all I care is that I have a, a tool that kind of gives me guidance on, yeah. oh, wow, I just adjusted something in my diet, my routine. According to what I think should happen, I should be down a few percent or whatever. And if I'm up, then it's always this red flag that okay, I mm-hmm. went too too mm-hmm. far. Right? I'm actually interested in pursuing some aesthetic goals for this year, but what I know, what? I know, I know, it's weird. But Bro, that's um, gonna be too much sexiness. That's yeah, all I'll say. but it's like I realized like through all this. I was I had all these like pains in my my hips and I was starting to really um, you know start complaining about the same thing over and over again and I was that still caboose you know like it it was just getting annoying I couldn't I couldn't move the same and so it really was just a lack of 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 strength and just letting it sort of go. So. Are, you, are you gonna get a six pack? Yeah, stupid. Bro, I'll say it right now. No, you are not. I'm gonna say it. Don't say that. No, I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, you already said it. <laughs> it's out there. Nah, it's too bad. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna have a six pack. Have you ever had a full on six pack? Uh, yeah. When I was like playing sports and I didn't care when he was seven. <laughs> he has yeah. to say when he doesn't care. He has to say he doesn't care. I've never, I, I've never actively tried to have one. If that makes sense. But I did have one. Dude, well, you'll, it's, you'll it's dangerous. Uh, apparently, it's pack. harder than becoming a millionaire. So. Okay. That's what they say. Kind of a big deal, bro. Yeah. Well, it's dude, kind of a big deal to have abs. That's, you'll look, that's for people that, you know, don't try. You'll look crazy with a six pack. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what when you get down to ten percent you start to go below that, it starts to get weird. Well, it's like before I just didn't it it, it didn't have any appeal to me because I always felt like I'm just getting smaller. You're already too attractive, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want I don't want all that attention. It's like it's too much. I'm already yeah. like, I'm already like a nine and a half. I don't uh, wanna, I don't want to have to just go. Is gonna it's start, true. He's gonna start wearing midriff bearing shirts. <laughs> you used to rock those, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. A little fishnet, bring back you the fishnet did, uh, uh midriff. Did there. you really? Uh, yeah, of because course, football. That was popular. Football. football. I well yeah. Yeah, because it it basically um, it just, it just went yeah it, it, the pads would go down to there and so I would I'd wear that and I'd walk to practice with this stupid like you know half cut shirt and and you know I'd, I got some attention for yeah. that and then you think I was yeah hey girls I'm uh, do you know where the football field is yeah <laughs> it's so silly because I was watching Rocky you remember in Rocky when they uh, yes, Rocky three of course no when when oh. uh, Apollo he's wearing that little shirt I was like I used to wear those I know yeah. dude yeah. Rocky three that was a good one uh, they were watching those guys they were ripped. watching up. In Tahoe this weekend. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, without yeah, my me? kids, my kids love. You guys Rocky, trying to make me dude. feel really bad. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, so they, did they watch the one with the Russian? Yeah. 
We, we've watched all of them. That's the best one for kids. Yeah. I showed that one to my son, and he was just like, this is But amazing. I got a story, though, for uh, so Forrest Gump, right? So, mm. you know, there's... I was a little bit like I was fast forwarding scenes. I was going to say there's a couple parts. You there's a be couple careful. that are yeah. a little yeah, and the drugs and you know sex and stuff. Uh, I fast forwarded that, but when one of the scenes came up and I was like, okay, and I started fast forwarding, and, and Everett was kind of closing his eyes and then kind of, you know, and Ethan was like, why, why are you fast forwarding? And then he's like, oh, and he, he goes, up, he gives me the the signal and he does this. No, <laughs> I was dying laughing, dude. He made the little okay sign and he put his finger through. Oh it. my god! I was like, he, he's so cocky now that we had the talk that like he thinks now, like, like he I knows know everything. Yeah, it's he like knows. it's like an inside thing dude, between dad and I. Like Courtney and I were out. dying. We're dying. It's like when he found out Santa wasn't real. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know, Dad. Yeah, wink, wink. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. He's, yeah, his he's sleigh. Play, he's playing hide the salami, <laughs> yeah. right, Dad? Oh, he's gonna <laughs> shimmy his way down uh, the chimney. Oh yeah. my right. gosh! <laughs> I'm about to have that talk with my daughter. Oh, you mom. are. Yeah, she's in fifth grade. Yeah, it's it's time. You don't she, you don't so, hand that over to the wife for that one. No, um, no. I'll, I mean, or the I, ex. I, I want to be very. I want to have a relationship with both my kids where I can. No, so I'm not whether saying, they talk to them or not. I know, I'm but talk I. To them oh, okay. So I mean, I would think that I would. In that case, she would have it first, and then you would. I'm better at it. <laughs> so, I'm serious. Yeah. I, because I don't now. Does she does she concede that, or does or is that just your opinion? <sighs> so my ex not really very good because she gets like all weird about it. Like it's all like oh, makes her know. uncomfortable. Yeah. I I don't. I just. I'm very frank because yeah. I feel like if you talk to your kids that way, yeah, they won't think it's like some crazy. I've, I've learned to do that. That didn't come naturally, but I've definitely learned. to yeah, do Yeah. So, I, but my daughter's so naive. Like she's way more naive than my son was. And so mm. I brought it up. I, in fact, I was training my kids uh, over the weekend, and uh, we're doing a workout. And I said, "Oh, I said, you're in fifth grade. That means you guys are going to learn about sex and puberty." And my daughter's like, I don't want to know it. I don't like, want to. <laughs> don't tell me anything. I said, honey, you're going to learn this. It's, it's important stuff to know. I said, you know, you're going to learn about, you know, your period because you'll be getting that soon and what that is She's and this like, and that. Dad. I don't want to know any of that stuff. You know, that's what she was saying to me. But I'm going to sit down and talk with her. Uh, yeah. She's so like, I'm going to force her to listen to it. I, because I don't want her to have that attitude about it. Now, do you, uh, so there's lots of books around this. Yes. Like, there's books that you read to them. Do you guys use any tools like that? Or are you just like, just talk off, to off the charts? Off and, the cuff. Yeah. You just yeah. talk yeah. to them. Yeah. Presentations. Show watch. up in your uh, your grapefruit uh, Speedo underwear yeah. and what? use this as, as a diagram. <laughs> <laughs> what a. Great! What a great way to traumatize not my kids. Creepy at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you how do you bring it up and These talk to her about? It? Are you not using any sort of reference whatsoever no, when you're talking sit to sit down. This is what I do with my son. We sat down and I said, uh, "Okay, so you did sex ed in class. What they teach you? Oh, they taught me about the sperm and the egg. And I said, uh -huh. do you know how the sperm gets to the egg? Uh, and he's like, "Well, I think the penis does this." And I said, "Okay, well, here's what happens." And I'm just very frank. Mm -hmm. I tell him about the erection. So you'll, goes so in. you'll wait until she's gone through that before, is what you're saying? Yeah, I'll wait till she starts it. Okay. Because then they're gonna. Because then I can. That's what I meant. She's yeah. gonna have a reference to some of like sure. that. So you're talking about these things that you never heard of, or sure. you know. A lot but of she's funny. So my son was very much, and my son's like this. He'll just ask whatever. You know, he he comes up to me and he goes, "Hey, Dad, what's uh, LSD like? Or why do people do it?" He'll ask me questions like that. So when I talk to him about sex, he goes, "Why do people do it?" Why do they like to do it so much? I'm like, because it feels really good. He's like, it does. Like, now, yeah. when you ask, when he asks questions like this, do you just answer, yep. frankly, or do you, and you don't ask, like, why do you ask, or mm -hmm. like where that came from? I ask, I answer very frankly, and I, I give them the information that is pertinent to it. Like, I don't yeah. have to go over, or above, and beyond, uh, but I answer it. And, and just again, I, I, don't, I want that relationship to where they're not embarrassed. Yeah, you know, I try to stay as matter of fact as possible and really not like overdo the education of it like let them come in with the uh, questions because yeah he hasn't really gone over that much in detail in terms of the reproductive system and all that so i've had to kind of like dance with it a little bit and wait for him to mm. be interested so yeah. now you, you gotta use the you, real words too you can't say things like yeah, yeah wiener yeah. and whatever you gotta say penis yeah, vagina yeah, the right. whole thing now in your house do you handle that justin or does courtney help too with that yeah well uh I mean, so far it's just been me uh, because we had a long trip down Palm Desert and uh, we separated. We had two different cars and so I felt it was a good opportunity to kind of just spark conversation. And, uh, and, and and I had been kind of telling him ahead of time that we should talk and, and, and you know, this is part of the curriculum, you know, that you're going to, you're going to learn about all this stuff. And if you have questions, you know, feel free to ask me. And so I, I just kind of like slowly brought it up and was trying to see if there's an interest in talking. And then finally, and there wasn't. And then, you know, maybe an hour in, he started kind of asking me questions. Mm. And I was, you know. One of the first signs too is when your kid starts to have B.O., that's like one of the first signs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that happened. Yeah, I remember already. my little sister that we had to have her get deodorant when she was like third grade. 
Mm. That was the first. That was the first. We knew it was like right around the corner wow. for her because also yeah, like, some oh, girls man, get their period smell, really right, early. Sis, what's up? You got to get some deodorant. On. Yeah, yeah, it's just all of a sudden because oh, little yeah. kids, if they sweat a lot, I mean, they could smell or sure, but they don't have bo. Yeah, yeah all of a sudden, it's very distinct. It's a very different smell for sure. Ab- yeah, all of a sudden you're with your kid and you're like onions. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Hormones are changing. Hey, anyway. speaking of kids, uh, I think yesterday may have been one of my happiest days as a father i think close to for wow. sure what happened really yeah my my heart was just filled with oh, so i know why so much joy dude so <laughs> yesterday i'm in the living room right and you know we were you were talking the other day sal about uh recognizing the leaps that the kids make and yeah. I, I always i can totally tell like now right like when he's having a leap you just all of a sudden the words that he's trying to say are much more clear mm. or he's, he's pointing and, and recognizing things or he's doing something physically that he couldn't do before. So we're at one of these leaps and you know, I, I've been really nervous, right? So like quietly nervous. I don't, I don't like say much about it, but you know, of course I, you guys know that I want my boy to play basketball like more than anything. Uh, right? That's yeah. like just I mean, the fact that I love the sport so much and Katrina does too. Like, it's like, please, God, please, just let him, just let him like it. Number and, one reason why you got with the American Katrina. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and then at the same time, too, I'm like, oh, so cautious as a father to not, like, overly do it, right? So I don't want to, like, rub it in his face or constantly pushing him. It's yeah. just like, let him do his own thing, right? And he's naturally, like, gravitated to music, dude. Like, he just, he loves to watch music. He loves to listen to it. He's dancing right now. He's, like, trying to learn to snap his fingers. He's, like, into the guitar if someone's playing, like... And so, uh, and, and just like no interest in the balls, really. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and just recently he's been starting to like grab him here in the studio. He'll go pick up the basketball. And I'm like, oh, yes, like maybe. Yeah, he's, yeah. maybe he's, <laughs> and so for Christmas, uh, one of Katrina's friends got like a little basketball hoop <clears throat> and he's now put it together, like what you do with it. So yesterday mm. he was dunking the basketball and shooting it in the oh, hoop, dude. And on. I was just like inside, just like balling. I dude. know. You said so. <laughs> you said, so you said so. Just for the listeners, he sends a video to us, right? Of yeah. of, uh, of his boy, you know, putting the and his. It's, what did you say? Something like look at the look at his footwork on the <laughs> second <laughs> on the second duck. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, he definitely has his mom's genetics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a D one. She was a high high level yeah. basketball player. Yeah, she had a full she got a full ride, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, I made the mistake on where, right? We just did we just did you know, questions, right, on uh, people for uh, our live quad, right, that we have coming up. And it was uh, Cal State it's Fullerton. this episode. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Is yeah. that, I'm sorry, Doug. Yeah. So it was Cal State Northridge, and the person was Cal State Fullerton. I was texting Katrina, oh, hey, just talk to somebody who went to your school. She's like, you do know that I went to Northridge. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah, you're going to hear about that. Oh, for yeah, a no, while, no, dude. no. Forever. Yeah, yeah they're, no. They're like rivals. I'll get shit for sure. Oh, so but funny. yeah, I was so, man, yesterday was, and he did, dude. He shot one like from distance, dude. So it was. Footwork wow. looked good. Like his follow through looked good. Like it just, we're just starting. Come on, mm, genetic yeah. program. Yeah, I, 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 you start to see these things in your kids. You know, like my yeah. son was watching YouTube videos on on physics and the universe, and we're having these like theoretical conversations. And Jessica's in the background, yeah. listening, and she's you could see she's like really into it. Yeah, and we're going back, and then we start debating uh, religion, which he's he's a fucker because he he debates. <laughs> Like an like I do, right? Yeah. He just goes at it. And so him and are back and forth, and I try not to pull out the dad card, you know? Uh-huh. Like, no, I know, because yeah. I'm your father. I have wisdom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't do that, dude. No, <laughs> so we're just, I let him, you know, because I think it's good. I think it's a good way to develop course, your, your debate skills, your discussion skills. and Sure. So we're going back and forth. I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> that's that annoying part of me. That's my kid. You know? <laughs> yeah. He loves doing that. So anyway. That's funny. Hey, yeah, that's do, cool. Adam, you say you use um, Instacart a lot, right? Yeah. Where you order food? Almost- have, do they get your order right ever? Uh, yeah, so there's there's definitely some drawbacks to this, right? I mean, it's a, a like what newer technology for us. Bro, it's never, been... not once have I had a correct order. Really, not one time. Oh, no, wow. we ordered, dude. We ordered six potatoes. Yeah. So... Okay, they brought back six bags of potatoes. I have so many potatoes <laughs> at home right now. Dude. Yeah, for... I'm gonna be eating them forever. <laughs> they brought you six. <laughs> Bro, I got potato. For, that's my carb source for the next yeah. three, four yeah. months. Yeah, mash dude. them all up and yeah, bring them in there's here. Definitely, there's definitely so. I mean, you I, I, did you just start using it? Or have you, like... No, Jessica's used it like six times, and okay. they always fuck. Well, up. that's still relatively new. Like we've been using it a lot for the last few years. So what's now. the ratio of good? Of well, correct to what wrong? it is is you just learn things like that. Like you, if you at like for example, so the opposites happened to us. Like Katrina's like uh, she wants a banana, and you you expect. People 
people that grab they bring like, one banana. Yeah, one banana. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's like, what the fuck? One banana? Like yeah. you have to say like a bundle a of bananas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or five single bananas. You have to be very wow. specific. So fruits and vegetables, I think, are the hardest. Mm. They also like you know they don't they don't but, look through. Yeah, if it's the, or if you want organic, they're not going to get right. Shit. And they, so there's there's little things that like it's really good for like the essentials. Like so how we use it is. You know, if we, we have milk that's missing or there's like, you know, certain like uh, pasta noodles that she uses or, you know, veal, bison, there's certain things that we order from the grocery store all the time. Um, and so we kind of stick to those things. And if we need like specialty stuff, we know we're going to the store to get that. So it's kind of like we've learned like what, what you what you order. Oh, yeah, dude, it's hilarious. We got our groceries and I'm like, I had no idea what she ordered. I'm like, what do you plan on making? <laughs> <laughs> we have six bags. Potato soup, potato yeah. pie, bro, potato we gave, salad. Bro, we were giving them. We were giving them away to potato friends. Potato sandwiches. We have, we have a lady that comes and cleans the it's house like every once. Oh yeah. yeah, she came. She cleans the house a little bit. This lady that comes and I'm like, hey, here's a bag of potatoes. Oh, dude. I'm like, don't worry, your Christmas bonus. Then tomorrow different. we got potato guns. The the kids go crazy. Oh, I mean, yeah. I love potatoes, but good God. Yeah. <laughs> what am I gonna do with all that? Uh, that's, that's a lot. All those damn potatoes. Oh, uh, it's great. Anyway, yeah. so I want to ask you guys because uh, I know you guys. We're up in Tahoe together, all hanging out, yeah, uh, having a good time. Yeah, yeah and uh, you know, meanwhile, I was, you. I was yeah. over here eating clean, which is probably why I'm, sure. I'm not as fat as you guys. But anyway, yeah, uh, uh, were you guys drinking? What was the deal there? The uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Justin always drinks up there. Right? Hey, did you have bro. a day you didn't drink? Up yeah, there? dude, I had okay. at least like I mean, I only drink two days. Uh, oh, you really? You yeah, were good. You didn't wow. even notice that? Did I didn't you? notice that. Yeah. Oh, well, no. you must have been making drinks for other people. All he noticed uh, is you were not as fun as normal. So maybe I was kind of a dud. Yeah. Like, but no, I so so one the nights it, it, you know what it was it was the night after we did the the, the night uh snowboarding where you know we we're we we're like on a high from that i was feeling good i'm like dude i'm drinking tonight you know it's like it, it was a good vibe so mm-hmm. uh we just started making drinks and, and you know one thing led to another i got pretty smashed but totally forgot to take this there was this box of z-biotics right there and we didn't even take any okay no. so the contrast tell me about the contrast because i've done this Bro, i've drank with it and without it. i know so we've done this and i'm like oh this is a lifesaver so i i didn't even think i really got hangovers anymore because i haven't had one in like like a year or something like it just hasn't really affected me but i i was drinking so i was mixing whiskey with with some of this like cream so it was i think it was bailey's uh and we we're, were doing these like uh this this irish whiskey kind of cream drink and the next day i was so hungover i was just like out of sort man i had a headache i was achy like i just didn't want to get up and do anything i, I like, did the same sucks. thing same thing i was so pissed but we, you know we came back from the snowboarding and i just thought i was gonna have one drink i was like oh you know like justin said i was on a high we had a great ride it was a great day i worked out earlier in the day like actually it was yeah. pretty dialed nutrition i was like yeah, I'm gonna enjoy a drink. You know, I had all these. I know I burned a bunch of extra calories. Like, let's let's enjoy a drink, maybe two, but it turned into four, and they were doubles. Yeah, and that's a lot for me. Oh, well, yeah, you need a heavy hand. When oh, you're making those. and we were like playing cards and doing things sitting down. Yeah. So you don't I even didn't, notice. I didn't notice until we went to bed, and we climbed into bed, and I told Katrina, I was like, oh shit, I'm drunk. Know. I'm hella drunk. And she, and she asked me, she goes, did you take the Z-Biotic? And I go, no, I didn't take it. And so I got up, drank a bunch of water, took some Advil, hoping that would mitigate it. Yeah, I did the same. Hung over Nothing. all day the next day. It's weird. I the was con- so pissed, The dude. contrast to me is so weird. We have a massive box. We have a value pack. <laughs> That's 40, what I wanted to slap. 48 of them there, dude. dude. Right, And there, it's, we have it, I have it set up on the bar. Yeah. So like when you're making a drink, you're looking yeah. at the Z-Biotic, and I just didn't think I was going to have that many, and I was like, uh, you know, one more. I'm the, you know what it is? I'm the supplement Crazy. guy. If I was I there, know. you guys would have taken you'd it. Have, you'd have remembered. 100% yeah, you yeah, would. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I would have been like, here you go, boys. I know. So, yeah, we were all on momentum. Yeah, like, yeah let's I had, do this. I had Jessica try it, and she, I mean, she's not going, obviously, because she's breastfeeding, but there was, I remember I told you guys we went up to, uh, what's that place called? Sanctuary? Uh-huh. And oh. So I meant to did, ask you about that. Did we talk about that? Um, I don't know if we did, if we covered it on the on the show. But it was great. We had a great time over there. Yeah. But she did the pump and, you know, dumping all the stuff or whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, we were feeding them by the bottle from previous milk. So she, you know, we had a good time. She did the z same thing. And she's very sensitive. Wow. She'll get a migraine the day after. Oh, wow. And she felt nothing. She <sighs> felt nothing. So that stuff's pretty... Yeah. Pretty wild. I think most people, it's going to have a massive effect. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Hey, yeah. I wanted to bring up an article with you guys that uh, it was, a, it was a, it's an article being shared quite a bit. In fact, I've had several DMs on it. Um, you guys familiar with the Fast Company? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they did an article titled, Gyms Aren't Coming Back. Here's how you'll work out in the future. Have you guys seen this one? No. Well, no, but I mean, this sounds pretty familiar to what Mind Pump's okay. been saying. Okay, so <laughs> so they're, they did, they're doing surveys on lots of people who work out and all this stuff, and here's what they're finding, okay? 
76% of people have tried working out at home during the pandemic. Here's the important uh, percentage, uh, the important statistic of that. 66% of them, so almost all of them, prefer it. Wow. Now, with millennials, interesting. With millennials, 82% started working out at home. 81% like it more. Wow. So this yeah. this wow. article is a big shift. This article is predicting that that okay, now here's here's I just the, want to say I call we just had a question on what I think 2021 trend is going to be and I think we are going to see them moving in this direction more than we ever have. So here's the analogy that they used that I thought totally. was that I thought was absolutely brilliant. And in if you're not, you know, I guess 35 or older, you're not going to remember this, but when I was a kid, Arcades were an amazing place to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you, you had video games there. You went. You hung out. It was a oh, great place. The experience was fantastic. But once video games uh, were able to be played at home, same quality or whatever, people thought literally that arcades were going to exist still because people like to be around each other. They yeah. are nobody. There's no arcades anymore. In fact, wow. the only ones that exist now are where you get the tickets and you get the toys oh. and stuff. It's not like they used to be. And they're saying that that gyms are going to be like that. That now people are – that this was the push that – they said in the article they're saying it was going to happen anyway. It was mm-hmm. just going to take longer. Mm-hmm. But this caused so many people to, to really start working at it at home. And, and again, a majority of people who are doing it prefer it, and they're wow. thinking that the gym industry will never be the same How interesting. Again. I totally – yeah, that, that's a great uh, analogy. I, I could totally see that as, as being something because I, I loved arcades. So did I. I loved, loved them. We had one called Special Effects, and I would like save all my money, and I'd go there and geek out and play video games all day. But once you got the you, Nintendo NES and you had like guys that could come over your house, yep. you have to recreate that same experience within the confines of your house, it was game over. Oh, Dude. it was – Especially once it got to the place where you could connect. Then it oh, was, yeah. Then, then it was truly game over. Because yeah. there was like this transition where I, you know, like what I feel like we're going to go through. Like gyms aren't going to go away tomorrow, right? right? And there'll still be some gyms. They're Just not like going to go away completely. No. Yeah. And and but so what? what is your prediction on the type of gym that's going to survive this? I think what's going to end up happening Niche is- Niche hardcore ones. Yeah. You're going to see like really, really hardcore fitness people. Yeah. Because um, in the article, they also talk about people doing classes at home and preferring them. Now with the technology- like Pel- cuz Peloton does this. Peloton will you can literally do a live class mm-hmm. at home and and you can if you want you could talk to other oh, people. Oh, those are going to keep exploding. Yeah, so I have my cousin uh, and their and his wife do, do this and they were big class takers and I said, "Okay, be honest with me. It, when when things open back up, do you want to go back and do the classes?" I'm like to be honest with you, no, this is way better. I like mm-hmm. it more. Yeah. I don't have to drive, I don't have to worry about this, that. I get the interaction that I want and I get to do my workout. So I think the hardcore fitness people, mm-hmm. I think the classes that you have to be with other people like jujitsu and you know certain things you have to go that's against. That's different. Right, that's different. But gyms, uh, I think they're I think it's gonna be And it's the same. Like it I mean, it's sad, you know, like I love gyms, I love that culture, I love you know, like going through all that, but at the same time, like have to be realistic. Like those statistics are, are telling you otherwise. There's people Well, that especially just, when you say the millennial generation is eighty one percent and eighty of them say that they like it better. Yes. So it's like it's not a it's not a question of if that's true and if it's going to happen, it's just a matter of when. When right. Yeah. Right. When when do the millennials become forty, fifty, you know, plus years old and they're the main people that are and then they've influenced the generation coming up they were also talking the article about uh fitness uh people who are fitness professionals so trainers and instructors all of them have started to pivot and most of them when they do surveys prefer it Hmm. they actually prefer not working in the gym why you guys know as well as i do when you work in a gym you know, if the person's paying hundred dollars a session, you're getting you know thirty dollars, and the gym gets the, the majority. Yeah. So a lot of these instructors are now pivoting, doing it online or going to people's houses, and a lot of them, a good chunk of them, prefer it. Well, it, this is interesting because we've been talking about this for a long time, mm. regardless for trainers, right? So I, this was before COVID. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, part of look at part of our pivot is that right? We all were trainers and training people in gyms and at homes for the longest time, and the writing was on the wall that we're moving into this, you know, digital virtual space and that it's going to be necessary to have some assets in it if you're going to be successful in in fitness and in business later on. So, well, it's interesting to think about too about that kind of format and that platform. Like there's going to be ones that rise, right? They're just like you know when you went to these group classes like you had a following, right? All these people that knew that you're teaching the class that day and all that. Like there's got to be some crazy incentives like some of these companies that are providing these platforms are going to give these instructors 
you know, to, uh, you know, pull more people. It'll, it'll probably create its own social platform. That's, yeah. a, that's an interesting theory right there. And you see that there's like a lot of these apps that are popping up and they do, they go after like these fitness influencers and they try and gather, mm -hmm. you know, 10 of them that all have a hundred thousand followers and they, that you can get them all through this one app that they pay a membership and they have That's access. what they're saying. These fitness apps are, are exploding and they also use the analogy of the music industry. The music industry oh, yeah. changed a lot with uh, technology. Like now artists don't necessarily have to go through big labels and all that stuff to sell their music. And you're buying music, not necessarily buying an album, but a song at a time. And they're saying that, you know, this is kind of what's going to happen yeah. uh, to, to fitness instructors. They also speculate, they think that for gyms to survive, they're going to have to look more like social clubs. So mm. where they offer things like cocktail bars and cafes, and, oh, yeah. but that's more high end mm -hmm. type of stuff. Now I want to ask you guys. You guys know my opinion. I prefer working out in a home gym. Always, I love it. I just love my own music, my own thing. I don't get away for anybody. <laughs> and if I work out with friends in yeah. my home gym, it's the best. There's no the gyms are great. Don't don't get me wrong. I grew up in gyms. I love them. Mm -hmm. Home gym for my workouts. It's just uh, more effective. It. What do you guys think? Do you guys like the f working out now that you guys are doing it here, or do you guys still? Well, like you know what I think happens. Happens is, and or at least what I feel is happening to me, because I, out of us, I was the one that you were the biggest. Gym, yeah, I was yeah. the most staunch about. I don't want to work out at home. I'm, yeah. I've tried it a bunch of times. Not a fan of it. But I, my hand was forced mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. and you know, and maybe a, a inside I was grumbling a little bit, like oh, I don't, you know, I want to go. To, I like my gym. I like going to my gym. And and for the first few months, then then I went through this period of like accepting it, like shit, we might not be going back there for a long time. Like let's learn to love what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And now I've gotten so comfortable mm. with where I'm at now. I just don't care. Mm. It's that you know if the gyms and and honestly now it's got to the point where I'm like well, shit if I just cancel all those memberships I'm gonna save X amount of dollars a month and I figured it out and it's actually working out just fine the way it is and mm -hmm. sure maybe I like certain things about the gym but at the end of the day what I really care about is the results mm -hmm. you know is my productivity in my life better is my health good am I strong do I feel fit like am I really checking the boxes for the whole purpose of why I had a gym am I able to do that in our in our studio here right or at our our, our other place at home and the answer is yeah mm -hmm. i figured it out and honestly i as every day that goes by that i don't go to the gym i miss it less and less mm -hmm. and i think that's what's so dangerous to the, the that's big what gym. they're saying yeah what's so dangerous is that even the people like myself who probably admitted like early on when this first transition happened like oh i can't wait for it to open back up mm -hmm. though i missed the yeah. gym i missed the gym now I'm like fuck it. I don't. I certainly don't want to go what they're doing right now outside in some bullshit tent when it's like freezing outside to to lift. Like I would way rather be at wearing home a or, mask and everything. Yeah, and, and wearing just, a like it's. I have a hard time in the grocery store wearing a mask for twenty minutes make straight sense to work out with a mask on. I no, just can't do. It. And again, I'm not like anyways. Like not trying to be political, but just like knowing that like I'm restricting my breathing and all this. Like I'd rather just work out in my house. That's yep. just it's just more comfortable. It's more convenient. And there's a lot of better options out there now for setting yourself up in your house where you know you, you can have squat racks you can have things that aren't so you know it doesn't take up your entire room it doesn't engulf it like no it used to. no i mean i i've uh, look i grew up working out in my backyard and then of course i worked in gyms most of my life so i worked out there but then i had my own studio and when i had a personal training studio it was equipped like a nice home gym because it was a personal training studio it wasn't a big box gym. So I'm not going to have tons of machines. It didn't make any sense. And I worked out there for so long and I got so, I fell so in love with being the owner of the gym I'm working out in. I could play what I want. I could take as long as I want. I could throw chalk everywhere if I want. I could do whatever lifts I want. I love it. And I still love that. I love that feeling. Even, and you talk about the, the you know, cold and hot. Look, my home gym's in my garage. I don't have a heater in there. I don't have AC in there. I, I love it. When it's freezing, I love it. I put a bunch of sweaters on. I work out. I can see my breath. When it's hot, I take my shirt off. You can't do that in a gym. I know it's not as comfortable, yeah. but for me, it feels like it's a part of the whole thing. Yeah. You, you know, know what? I'm, shoes. I'm also going to credit, uh, I think, the helping of this transition is CrossFit, too. You know, you we had, CrossFit has such a large following, and it's such minimal equipment You're, required yeah, to do point. that workout. Good that point. imagine all those people that have had to make that transition right now too. So you have a big portion of you know fitness people that 15 years ago mm -hmm. weren't exercising that way, mm -hmm. right? And they thought but, you needed all kinds of machines, right? Yeah. And then and that mm -hmm. 90 or 90s, the machines, you know, Nautilus is exploding, and everybody's talking about the latest, greatest, cool machines, and so yeah. nobody is thinking about all I need is a pull-up bar, a barbell, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some plates. And 
and I'm good to get maybe a couple dumbbells and I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. And CrossFit explodes, takes on a good per- percentage of all the people that are working out. Now here we are with COVID, everyone's having to work out at home. All of a sudden, even if you're not a CrossFit person, that type of a box or that mm-hmm. type of a feel for a gym is becoming more and more appealing. And you realize like, oh shit, I can accomplish everything. Really? Here. It's just, it's again, it's people who were reluctant, forced, and then they realized, hey, I like this. Yeah. I think I'm going to stick with it. That's exactly what the article is talking about. It's a massive change. So what are the do- what are the gyms going to do? Like what are they going to yeah. how are they going to pivot and who's going to survive this this mess, dude? Like, oh, I don't know. Dude. I mean, you're saying that the 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 irony of what you guys are saying is that the gyms that you think are most likely to succeed are actually not the most profitable gyms. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I agree yeah. with you. You guys are saying these grungy, you know, like, you know, well, serious lifter type gyms. Those gyms don't make a lot of money. The ones that make the most money are your Planet Fitnesses, your UFC gyms. Yeah. See, your big- that one baffles me. Like, and I saw their, their campaigning and everything for the New Year's, and, and it's like, where are all their locations open? Like, how is that working out for them? It depends on the state. Right. Yeah, some states, they're obviously more open than others. Here in California, California, forget it, right? They're, of course. And this is the mecca. Well, no, it even, here, even here, though, they're doing outside right now. So a lot of these gyms, a lot of our gyms are are open outside. Right. They, did you guys, have you guys gone by 101 and seen the 24-hour fitness super sport? No. Oh, so the, you know where the, where Bay 101 is over there? Yeah. They, that whole, it was a, I don't know if you guys remember, that's a massive parking lot, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. They've turned that whole thing into like a massive tent. Now, are the, is it it's all, in, is it enclosed? Like they do <laughs> no, 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 it's like there's a top. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. like a, it's I actually a, would love working out like yeah. that. I don't yeah. mind working out outside. Yeah. No, man, that's fun. Yeah, I don't I'm not a big fan of like <laughs> it, it freezing cold. You're the bougie gym. I'm guy. trying to get convinced Doug right now on the, the trucky place. I'm like, can we get some heaters on these ceilings? You go out there when it's fucking ten degrees and you uh, grab a barbell. You know, it means uh, your, yeah. your hands bleed. I, I <laughs> see I like that. You know what though? I've been meaning to ask gritty. you, Adam, because I know yeah. how much you hate working out in the morning, or you've said a million yeah. times a Yeah, yeah. Now we're working out in the morning. Uh, how how are you enjoying it? Is it is it okay for you? I know you have bad sleep sometimes. Like, yeah. So today was actually the first hurdle. Uh, I, up until this point, it's been really smooth. Um, I've had really good nights rest, but uh, today was the hardest time for me. In fact, I almost didn't do it. And what I love, and what I'm most excited about, is that because we are doing this together. Had I been training by myself, um, I've definitely earned a day off or sleeping in or mm-hmm. resting because I've you know I didn't get good rest and I'd be totally fine. Um, but because I don't want to let I don't want to be the first guy to not make yeah you know what I'm saying like, well, there's something there for sure there is right so I'm like I don't want to be the first guy to not make the the workout and since you guys have committed to doing that mm-hmm. like I drug my ass here just changed the intensity of my training and uh, it's been fine it's been okay I still. Um, and I and I and I think we'll I'll play with this probably in a in a month or so. Like when I really like it's been a month now of re- really good consistency and starting to scale volume up. Once I'm really starting to feel myself, like feeling strong and feeling good, I'll start playing with my workout times because what I found when I was competing and I was really dialed in, th- there was a significant difference because I trained at all times. I trained mm-hmm. crazy late at night, crazy early in the morning, middle of the day, multiple times a day. Like, and I got a chance. And when when you when you're so dialed in nutritionally and consistency, you can really start to like tease out like yeah. how well, how does my body respond to this mm-hmm. versus some bullshit mm-hmm. you know article you read that says this is the best time to do this. It's like what I learned about my body was. After I had two meals in, so I had- and So it's like noon? Yes, around yeah. noon. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I would have a, a good breakfast first thing when I woke up. I'd have another another breakfast around 10 o'clock or so. And then noon, I was just, I felt strong as shit. And that, and the, you take me training first thing in the morning, and I feel okay, like I'm doing all right right mm-hmm. now. But I don't feel as strong as I do when I've loaded up probably 150 plus grams of carbs in me and probably a good 2,000 calories- then I feel really good. Yeah. What about like uh, any techniques to help you sleep? Because I know this morning you woke up and you, uh, this morning you came in, you're like, I had shitty sleep. <laughs> well, listen, dude, uh, here's a funny one. We're talking about our our partners. Like, yeah, it's so funny. Like, uh, you know, we know when we talk about them on the show, the reason why we're partnered with these companies is because they work and we believe in it. But yet, you know, I'm human. I don't always do it. I don't always take the protein shake. I don't always put the Felix Grey glasses on. I don't always use the Z-Biotics. So I recently bought the new TV for the Black Friday sale, right? Oh, you got it. So how big is this thing? <laughs> so, it's like spaceship big. So, I mean, you guys know the way my condo is set up. Right? I have a, a tri-level for the listeners, right? And it's, so it's I'm only in, I'm only in about 2,000 square feet where uh, Katrina and I reside, right? And the dining room and the living room is, I mean, it's smaller than this, yeah, this, this yeah. studio. And uh, I couldn't pass up the Black Friday sales on the TV. So my original thought was, okay, I'm going to buy this TV. Let's put it in storage. We're planning on moving soon to a bigger place. 
And uh, I was like, I'll just put it, I'll put it in that house, right? So, <laughs> but of course it came and I'm like, fuck, I want to open this thing. It's 82 inches. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> and That's a movie theater. <laughs> and, and my living room, I mean, I'm probably four feet from the television. Yeah. And so I had the last two nights. So I left one of my Felix Cray's up at the, at the Truckee house, the ones that I normally have in my living room. So I told you, I've got them all, th- I've got like four pair, right? So they're all strategically in my house. So I don't have an excuse to not wearing them. The one pair that I normally have in the living room where I watch TV is up at the Truckee house because I left him up there and the last two nights I've watched TV I've gone to bed with massive headaches dude be- wow. Because why are you too close to that big ass? I think dude? it's the combination of both, right? Because I was wearing the glasses and watching the eighty-two inch, and I was fine. But the combination, a lot of bright light, the combination it's of beaming on you. Of, of, <laughs> Did you get a tan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious though. Though, so two nights in a row now of no Felix Gray glasses and watching that. I mean, first of all, I don't know. People are listening right now. They're like you're an asshole. You shouldn't be watching the TV that close, anyways. Like, get it? Okay, I get it. Yeah, I know that. But I didn't notice this before when I was wearing the, because we've had the TV since, you know, uh, Black Friday, you know, sale or whatever. So we've had it for a while now. And I've been very consistent with this. We turn on the TV, I throw them on, whatever. But these last two nights, I haven't had them. And sure as shit, both nights, the first night didn't even dawn on me, got a headache, took some, you know, took some Advil, whatever to think about it. Second night in a row, and I went, son of a bitch, is it because I don't have these freaking glasses on and this TV's messed Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't do too big of a TV too close. I get dizzy. Yeah. The shit's happening, and I'm like, what do I look? I got to look over here, see what's going on. Yeah, I, I watch it from the dining room now. Oh, <laughs> it's, oh, it's better. I refuse, like, back when the theaters were open, and then you have, like, even if it's, like, three, four rows back, yeah, I, you know, I can't I would, even do it. I I'm just do like, it I'm not doing it. Have you guys ever gone to, what is those theaters where it's all around you? Remember those? Amphitheater? No, uh, no, no, no. IMAX? IMAX. Yeah. No, Duke, that's nausea city, dude. I can't. I love those. Those are awesome. No, man. As long I'm as in... you're like back far enough in the middle. I'm in there. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> all right, gotta go. I, I can't think I saw you. Avatar in one of those. It was pretty sick. No, it's too big, dude. Yeah, that's cool. Too big. Yeah, that's sizes awesome. and everything. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what girls tell you. <laughs> Our first caller is Amber from California. Amber, you must be pretty. I see Doug getting nervous over there in his chair. <laughs> he's, squir- he's squirming over there and forgetting what he's supposed to say, huh? Jeez. <laughs> hey, Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton. That's where uh, Katrina went to college. Oh, uh, me too. Oh, no way. What year? Um, let's see. I graduated in 05. Okay. So I'm- wow. Well, you guys you guys would be pretty close. She might have been. Uh, okay. Yeah, she might have been a senior. She played basketball there. She went a full ride basketball. Oh, cool. I was a kinesiology major there, so I'm sure we crossed paths at some point. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's great. Right awesome. On. What's your What's your question? How can we help you? So I completed MAPS Anabolic and was about finished with MAPS performance when I had a pretty significant change to my schedule. This was about eight weeks ago, and since then, I've worked out maybe like a handful of times and totally gave in to all of the, the holiday food and treats. My schedule now is um, back to normal, and so I'm planning on cleaning up my diet, and I'd like to really just focus on gaining strength. Uh, I was able to grab MAPS Powerlift in the recent sale and was thinking of either starting that or maybe purchasing MAPS Strong and trying that out. But my question is, uh, since I've lost some muscle mass and gained some body fat over the past eight weeks, would it be better to run something like MAPS Anabolic first to maybe lose some of the fluff that I gained or should I just jump straight into a strength specific program? Mm, I love this mm. question and such a smart question because mm. uh, we talk about this on the show, right? Where you know things happen and inevitably you you fall off, or we have the holidays and you you miss the gym for two or three weeks. And one of the the things that I know, even as a trainer, I would make this mistake of you know wanting to kind of pick up right where I left off. And you know, I always talk about on the show that the goal is always to do as, as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change and hopping into a program that might have a lot more volume than let's say like a MAPS anabolic um, is unnecessary, right? To start seeing results again. So personally, um, I have a tendency to want to do exactly with what you're asking, jump into like a strong or go right into a power lift and kind of pick up where I left off. But the reality is I could probably scale all the way back to a MAPS anabolic pre-phase or phase one and get just as good of results and then eventually progress to one of those programs. Amber, you said you took eight weeks off essentially, so two months? Yeah. Yeah, so you know, yeah. here here's the thing that um, uh, it, and this just can't be overstated, right? So when you take time, obviously you've got muscle memory going on. You worked out a lot before, so your body's going to respond faster um, than a, someone who's a complete beginner. So that's the good news. The bad news is when somebody takes time off after having been consistent, your mental image of your body's capacity and even your pain tolerance are 
somewhat unchanged from when you were working out consistently. So you'll go into the gym and you'll work out at an intensity that's a little lower than before and be like, okay, I think that was enough. And then you'll realize, you know, a day or two later that you, you overdid it. Um, yeah. Going too hard or applying too much intensity or too much volume uh, doesn't get you there any faster. In fact, it actually gets you there slower. Okay. So the right amount of volume and the right amount of intensity uh, will get you there the fastest. And so my advice to you is to do less than even you think you should do. Okay. You, It's actually a better place to start. It's harder to overdo it and then backtrack than it is to do a little too little. And after the first few days say, you know what? I think that was too little. I'm going to add a little bit more and kind of play it by ear. Now, soreness isn't a great indicator of a good workout, but it is an okay indicator of whether or not you did too much. So the goal should be to feel a little bit of soreness or no soreness from your workout. So use that as your gauge. Do your workout. Uh, MAPS anabolic prephase is a great way to jump back into the workout. And if you're feeling a little bit of soreness or not, you know, not any soreness at all, you're on the right track. After about a week of prephase, then I would say you can move into uh, maybe a MAPS anabolic phase one or even a phase two for a week or so. I would say probably two or three weeks and you'll be back to being able to go at a, at a higher intensity and higher volume. And then transition, you think, over into power yeah. lift or strong. Power lift. Yeah. I love power lift though right now if, you're, if your goal is to build strength right now. Totally. How were your results when you did MAPS anabolic? Um, really good. Yeah, I definitely saw a change. And so um, it was pretty easy to transition over into maps um, performance also. So I was excited for that. But I've just, I've always really focused on just getting like the lean, you know, like muscles, mm -hmm. but I've never focused on strength. And so that's something that I thought would be a good change for this year. Oh um, yeah. So that's why I wanted to try power lift or strong. No, excellent. That's a, that's a great way to go. So thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Thanks Amber. You know, I love, uh, smart in, question. It, very mm -hmm. good question. And in my experience, when women focus just on strength, they get, it such, warms me up inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. And they get such phenomenal results. Yeah. They get amazing. And they're always so shocked, right? That their curves are good and that they're, well, we just need so more fast. of that. Yeah. We need more of that to, to, to kind of change the landscape and, and get that to be the focus. I think it's such a great thing for women to really like find their way to strength. Well, forget that she's a woman. I think it's great that she asked a question like that because I think this is something that took me years in my career to finally figure out. Because I, I would always overreach. Mm -hmm. Because and Sal, you said it perfectly. Like your your body's not there, but your mind still is. Mm -hmm. You know, two months ago isn't that long ago. So you feel like, and if you've been really consistent, right? She'd ran all the way through anabolic. She'd gone through performance. So you're talking. She's got six months of consistency. She's probably feeling herself. She probably feels strong. She's mobile. And then you take a eight, you know eight weeks off. It's almost almost like starting back on square one. Mm -hmm. But your brain still thinks like I can't be that far totally. from there because I was so consistent. And so we always have this tendency to yeah, your mind plays tricks on right. That. Jump into kind of where you were before. And the reality is, you know, a two day a week maps preface type of a program is going to get you just as much of results with least with less effort. And then you can build upon that yeah. to get back in. Good rule of thumb, I would say this is different from person to person. But however much time you took off. Usually it takes about a third of that time uh, to get back to kind of where you were before. So if you took off, let's say nine weeks, give yourself about three weeks to kind of get back to where you were before. Um, that's kind of a rule of thumb. It can be as high as half the time, depending on how long uh, the time was taken off and, and your genetics and all that stuff. Our next caller is Andrew from New York. Hey, Andrew, uh, what's your question? How can we help you? Hey guys, so I'm actually running Max Powerlift right now, and I kind of had a question about how the one rep max calculation worked. And then after you run the 11 weeks, how would you go back and calculate your new max to see how much progress you made? You, you know, one rep, there's a lot of one rep max calculators that you can find online. Obviously, in Powerlift, we give you some ideas. Here's the problem with them they're not super accurate. Okay, they're, they're better than nothing. They're going to give you a general idea. But really the only way to know what your one rep max is is to test your one rep max. And I'll give you an example, okay? So um, for me, I have a lot of uh, low gear strength or whatever you want to call it. I can, I can lift way more at the low reps than a one rep max uh, calculator will say. So a one rep max calculator, for example, might say that my one rep max based off of 10 repetitions 
would be, I don't know, I'll make up a number, 300 pounds, but then I'll end up being able to do 315 on my own. I've known other people to be the opposite where they do really well when the reps are around six, eight reps. And then once we go down low, they miss the one rep max uh, calculator. So here's my advice to you um, is, uh, are you able to work out with a partner? Um, I could. I'm just working out from home right now. So if, if I were to do a one rep max by myself, I'd have to have someone come over who is who is comfortable with that during during COVID. Yeah, I would either do that or do you have safeties uh, that you can squat or bench with? Uh, no, not on the rack that I have. Okay. Well, do you do you have intentions of competing, or is it, are you just following the Maps Powerlift program to just get stronger? Well, well I'm taking your advice from trying to move from that aesthetic look and being so anxious about what I'm eating and what I look like to, to, to push it more towards my performance. So that's really why I wanted to run power lift to just see how heavy I could, you know, get my, get my big three lifts. So, so here's my advice. Like if you, I think it's a little more important for somebody who is going to do show up to a meet and do a rep, one rep max to use the calculator and to be like very rigid about it where you would actually have a partner come over to measure it and figure it out. Like, okay, this is what 80% of my one rep max should look like and do all the math. I think using it just as a nice guide for you. Like for me, when I think 80%, I think I still got one more and one to two more in the tank. So I would just guesstimate where my weight needs to be because my overall goal is just to build strength. I don't, I'm not going to get up on, I'm not going to get up on a, a meet and compete against somebody. So if that's your goal, I wouldn't get so hung up on the calculators because of like what Sal said, it is so nuanced and it is so individualized for everybody that, you know, one person, they might do the, the, the calculation and they're actually stronger on that. Somebody else might be weaker. Mm -hmm. So really it's there for a good guide for you. And it would be a lot more serious if we were going to get out there and do a meet and we got to make sure that you are maximizing every single time. Otherwise I'm using something like that as just a guide. Yeah. And Andrew, how long? you've been working out for uh probably on and off for six years that's good you know one of the most important things that somebody can develop when they're working out on a consistent basis is to kind of get in touch with their body and how they feel because i know from training clients uh for for decades that y your max can change from day to day just based off of how you feel your energy your sleep, your nutrition uh, the day before. So, um, you know, what Adam's saying is is the best advice. You know, use it as a, as a general guide, but also, and more importantly, go by the way that you feel. Um, if, you're, if, the, if MAPS Powerlift is asking you to lift at 80% and you're doing it and it feels more like 70%, then go ahead and add a little bit of weight. And especially if it feels more like 90%, then take some weight off. Um, that's the best way... Uh, to 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 work out long term. Have you gone through all of uh, Ben Pollock's master class about this at the end of the program? Yes, I got. I, I went through it one time, so maybe I could probably go back and, and rewatch it. Yeah, because I mean, we really were just trying to follow a lot of what he does to, to prep himself and his clients to you know getting into a meet uh, specifically. So he uses a lot of these percentages and then changes it based off of the phase. So uh, we we tried to kind of align with him and 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 use his best judgment in terms of his calculations for that. But honestly, like they said, it's 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 more of a feel thing than anything else. So uh, I. Would really pay attention to that more than anything okay great so where where would you guys go after running powerlift if, if you kind of wanted to keep that that strength strong yeah map yeah. strong you're gonna yeah. get more functional with map strong but it's still a very oh you're gonna love strength map. yeah map strong after powerlift is beautiful oh it's amazing and it's it's uh it's funny it's one of the more popular programs people love uh map strong quite a bit so i would say go there afterward do you have map strong uh, no, I don't. All right. We'll sit, we're sending it to you right now. Oh, sick. All right. Thank you. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you. I love you guys so much. Right Thanks, on, man. Andrew. Awesome. Take it easy. Another good question because, uh, I, you know, complete transparency. When I go through powerlift, I didn't use a calculator. Yeah, and yeah. people get so hung up. I on, know they do. And, they, yeah. and there's, there's camps. It, there's, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're at a, if you're going to compete and you're going to get on stage, like, I mean, excuse me, get up on, on a mat or uh, whatever you call it for the, yeah. for powerlifting. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get up there. Platform. Yeah. Platform. You're going to, you're obviously that, that stuff matters, right. Mm -hmm. To maximize yeah. that. But if you're just an average person that's going through that, just following the program and going by feel, you're going to get incredible results as far as getting yeah. stronger. Plus think of the, uh, 
the skill that you develop in terms of feeling your body and knowing when to go heavier and when to go lighter. That skill is so important for long-term success. Well, it's just, to me, it's no different than calculating macros. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you know, your metabolism is like ever-changing and flowing. Right. So it's like you know, no, the best ca macro calculator on the internet is still flawed because right. it's your you could your sleep, your stress levels, your activity for the hormones. day, hormones. Yeah, yeah, everything could completely everything change changes. your metabolism. So to to follow something so rigid and be like, oh, it says that I need to put this much mm -hmm. weight or it says I need to eat this many grams or calories. Like you got to have a little bit of flexibility and understanding that, that the body doesn't exactly work that way. And so the, all these tools that we've created and came up with, I think are amazing because we didn't have them two, three decades ago for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great, these are great tools to use, but then you also don't want to be well, married to it's like your readiness, it. right? Each time you go into a workout, and this is why we like Joe DeFranco's uh, you know version where he's trying to do the grip test and right, see kind point. of like, you know, where your readiness is for the day and like what you can actually like achieve. So, you know, sometimes you want to push through it, no doubt, and you want to keep, you know, making progress, but also you really got to listen to your body. Yeah. And also, I mean, again, those, those, I don't know how about you guys, but those one rep max calculators never really accurate for me. Yeah. They always underestimate. It's just a standardized is. kind of mm -hmm. generic uh, framework for it. Our next caller is Will from Texas. Hey, Will, how can we help you? What's your question? First, Will, tell us why Sal annoys you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you expressed that. that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Now go ahead. Go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my wife is pregnant, and I would like to know how I should be structuring my workout pre-baby, and more importantly, during the sleepless nights of the first couple months when he is born. Uh, uh, I'd like to continue my strength goals. Hey, congratulations! First, yeah, first, yeah. second, you third. You did it. Which, which baby is this? Yes. Uh, first. Very oh first. yeah. You are in for it, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't listen to him. Yeah, it's hella easy. It, don't listen to him. It's hella easy, yeah. man. So, okay, so so there's a couple uh, there's a couple strategies that you could take. Um, so I'll I'll give you my favorite strategy. I've worked with a lot of uh, you know mothers that were pregnant and their husbands mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. during that period of time. And so I like to tell people um, to le go into the the birth at a at a good fitness level. Okay, and the reason why uh, I, I recommend this is because you're you're going to miss workouts. You're not going to be as rested after the baby's born for at least a couple months, if not more. And so you want to give yourself uh, a bigger buffer. Okay, so go into it uh, doing pretty well. So right now you have the time, um, you know, do some good workouts, have good nutrition. That way, if you fall off, you don't fall off uh, too far. Now, when the baby's born and you're losing sleep, sleep is a priority. Do not make the mistake of pushing through it with the lack of sleep, you will just, okay. you will hammer not just your testosterone levels, but your immune system if you do that. So a good workout, uh, general workout when you're limited on, you know, time and availability or whatever is, you know, like a two or three day a week full body workout where you're just focusing on uh, the main lifts. You're just doing the big compound lifts. What do your workouts look like right now, Will? So right now I'm in phase about halfway through phase two of MAPS Powerlift. Excellent. All right. Power Excellent. Lift. How's it going for you, by the way? Uh, I'm 30. Or I'm about to be 30 in April. No, no. how's it going for you with the workouts? How, how's your... Oh, sorry. Um, it's going good. Uh, so far, so good. I'm actually transitioning to building a home gym because of how crazy the gyms are going to be now. But um, it's going good. Strength is progressing pretty nicely, I think. So the advice that Sal gave, gave is exactly how I did it. Like I really, uh, I knew that I was going to have to sacrifice some days in the gym. I knew that I'd sacrifice some sleep. And so I, I had some pretty good momentum going into uh, her pregnancy. So I just kind of, I tried to push the volume, try to keep, be as consistent as I possibly could and as disciplined, knowing that the inevitable is going to happen, that I'm going to have days. And I actually, the first couple weeks because he's he's so attached to her and i you can't really as a father you, there's not a lot you can do for the first couple weeks um mm -hmm. i still had really good momentum for those first couple weeks it wasn't until i'd say probably weeks three and four did it get really challenging for like uh, me getting to the gym and fight and her being able to get to the gym uh, right and and so you know then then my workouts started to look kind of like uh, maps anabolic phase one and then eventually it even got as bad as probably like pre-phase and okay. no doubt, like I lost some strength. I didn't. I don't look as good as I did right before I came in a pregnancy. But he, I mean, it's uh, we're back in the swing of things. I think I've already surpassed where I was 
uh, before that, and it only took about a month to rebound and get back because I still maintain some training. Uh, but my priority became my, my wife and child, yeah. you know, and that's really where it should be right. for you too. It's like, if you can get in there as an, as a new dad and still get, you know, one or two full body workouts in while you're, you know, going through all this at the very beginning, I think you're, yeah. I think you're killing it. Everything you're doing right now is what you're going to kind of carry going forward. And I think that, like, you know, what, what you're trying to do in terms of like building your, your base of strength and, and, you know, having your intensity mm-hmm. up right now is, is, is a good way to go. And then, you know, really just shift in your mindset once you're in the thick of it because it is going to change everything yeah. so you just got to adjust one one more option too right. will is if, especially if you have a home gym is to do mini workouts uh so yeah, great great advice. you know like yeah. 15 20 minute workouts here and there yeah, i did a lot of that yeah two a day or three a day sometimes or one a day sometimes basically going out to your your home gym when you have you know a little bit of time and doing a few sets of an exercise and Believe it or not, the bo- especially when it's new, the body responds really, no, really well I, I, to that. Sal, I love that advice. And I don't have the luxury of having the gym in my actual house, but the studio is not far from my house, and I would do this a lot. And because, mm-hmm. you know, he's the, the baby's feeding every two hours and napping afterwards, and so those little... 30 minute hour naps were perfect times for me to get some, get a couple exercises in. And that's how I look at it is if you, if you can do that and you have an at home gym where maybe you can stick to the routine that you're already on, but you just break it up in two or three mini workouts throughout the day, there's a lot of value to that. So I think that's a great strategy also. Totally. Congratulations again. And and thanks for the question. Will. thank you. Thank you. Yep. You know that's such a that's a hard one, right? Because totally. it really depends on. I mean, I'm I'm lucky, right? Yeah. Like Katrina really handles a lot of the nights and takes the responsibility. We have support, and so I know that I have a lot more flexibility. Some dads have to be doing all that stuff, yeah, and very so hands on. Yeah, so asking him to get up in the middle of the night and and be doing a lot of feedings with with her, and then in addition to that also be trying to progress your workouts. It's a lot to ask somebody. It is. It's a tough uh, situation. That's why I like to say go into it, you know, really fit because you're going to lose <laughs> some exactly. of it, yeah. and it's better to have that buffer. All right. Our next caller is Stephen from Missouri. Hey, Stephen, how can we help you? What's your question? Hi, I was just curious if you had any insight on these anabolic anabolic diets from uh, these YouTube personalities. And basically the idea is to create low calorie dense foods using a lot of protein powder and then a lot of added artificial sweeteners and sugars. And basically go low calorie on everything. It doesn't matter. It, like if you want bread, go with the lowest calorie bread. Mm. My question is... Um, is this technically sustainable? Is there any like long-term uh, health benefits to this at all? Any risks, dangers? Well, okay, Stephen. So you have just uh, kind of tripped into the secret of of fitness. Get out of here! <laughs> go go <laughs> no, bullshit him of, like that. That's yeah. That's yeah. complete. And it's funny we they were call, trying it's to a keep that crock of shit. Totally. Is what it is. It, I can't, it's funny they call it anabolic, and then they tell you to go super super low calorie, which is going to be it's, catabolic. Yeah. Opposite. No, that's all uh, gimmicks and, and and jargon used to just sell people on you know stupid ideas, books or, or supplements. Uh, I'm sure I'm, they're probably selling something to to, to people. Um, anabolic diet. Uh, look, if you're eating in a calorie surplus, if your protein intake is uh, relatively high, and you also are training, you're anabolic. Tra- you're training in a way that your body wants to build muscle. Uh, congratulations, you're you're eating in in, in an anabolic state. Um, but aside from that, no, that's complete. Not only is bullshit. it not only that, it's bullshit too because you're either anabolic or catabolic. Always, you're one or the other. And if you're in a low calorie diet, you're ca- you're catabolic. Mm-hmm. If you're not eating enough calories and you're in a deficit, you're catabolic. So the idea that you're cat or you're anabolic when you're in a deficit or eating low calorie is a ridiculous notion yeah. in the in the first place. Now the other part of your question was, are there any long term, uh, I guess, detriments to it? Um, yeah. And the answer is, yeah. If if your calories are so low that you start to lose uh, lots of muscle, the side effect of that, the detriment of that is a much slower metabolism. And you can lose weight and increase body fat percentage uh, because you've lost so much muscle. So to give you an example, a person who weighs 100 pounds, who has 10 pounds of body fat on their body, is 10% uh, body fat. If that person loses uh, 10 pounds of muscle, uh, their body fat percentage now went up because they still have 10 pounds of body fat on a now 90-pound 
body. So, and I've seen this with clients. Well, they'll they'll you know they'll not follow my advice, go do some crazy diet. I'll test their body fat and they'll lose 15 pounds, and lo and behold, their body fat percentage went up a couple percent, and they can't you know figure it out. And I have to explain to them it's a percentage of your overall body weight. You lost muscle. So if you want a slower metabolism, if you want a flabbier body, um, then I would recommend doing these programs or these uh, nutrition plans. If you're trying to get long-term sustainable results, you want a faster metabolism, you want to get leaner, build more muscle, um, I would stay as far away from those things uh, as possible. Makes sense. Uh, do you think it's pretty damaging to the fitness community? Um, so basically they're preaching, hey, you can look good, but they're not really considering the health aspect of it. So people, I mean, even like me, go online, see these things. They may not understand how bad it is for you. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I mean, that this is the motivation of why mm -hmm. we started this. Yeah. I mean, that was exactly what all of us saw in our space for so. In fact, we were guilty of it. I mean, uh, this is the messaging that we would get down from the company. It was about selling, you know, memberships. It was about selling supplements, and so, you know, whatever gimmick or thing that we could come together to to, to sell people on to make more money for the business is much how most people online run their business. And it's tough for the consumer, you know, especially when they use a bunch of jargon that you're unfamiliar with uh, to confuse you into thinking that this is the best idea. But that's exactly what motivated the four of us to start Mind Pump is to counter a lot of this information. Yeah, I would say easily 90% of the information that's put out by the fitness industry at large, the diet industry at large, and even the wellness industry uh, at large, a good 90% of it is totally wrong. And of that 90%, a good chunk is actually dangerous. So um, there's just so much crap that's out there in this space. And like Adam said, this is exactly why we started Mind Pump, because it was very frustrating training clients and hearing these people come to us and say, hey, I heard this new thing, or I read this book, or I saw this ad, and I want to do this, and I got this new diet, and my it was friends just, doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was, you know, you know, I was you know, fighting an uphill battle, and so how do we reach more people? Let's start a podcast. Let's, let's talk to people about all this bullshit. Thank you very much for your question, by the way. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, how frustrating is that, man? When you guys would get clients that would come to you and, and tell you about stuff like this and you'd have to so counter. So common. We're always having to kind of unpack this and, and really like teach people like why it's so wrong. It's it's great though. I like that I'm, you know, I'm enjoying these live questions because we, you know, there's a lot of people that feel that way, but don't don't convey that or say mm -hmm. that. You yeah. know, they either just get suckered into it and they say, ah, oh, who cares? I'll just spend my hundred and something bucks. Let me try it out or yeah. don't say anything. So it's great to have somebody who who will admit or ask questions about this so we can have dialogue. Law because it is you're right, Sal. Most of the stuff that's floating around, especially right now, New yeah. Year's resolution, well, it's oh, tempting gosh. too. The momentum's super high. So, yeah, yeah. You want to change quickly, right? Right now, right now, they're getting bombarded with ads more than they ever have. Totally. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us also on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug the producer at Mind Pump Doug. Bikini brief or whatever. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you wear that to bed too. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. weird. It's kind of comfortable. That does, doesn't doesn't yeah, rub on like, the inside of your thighs. You gotta let them breathe, dude. It's more free, dude. But hey, let so, the boys breathe. So here's the deal, bro. So you guys, I'm heavy right now, right? Yeah. So yeah. my and I like to wear them. So now they're like a g-string. It's a thong now. Yes. Dude. <laughs> I have to fix it all the time now. It's what a up. terrible <laughs> visual.